Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, we're on a journey to improve people's health, and we are so grateful to have a very special guest with us today. Her name is Katie, and she is a holistic health coach, and she's just amazing. She has lots of ways to help people, lots of tools, strategies, and different ways that you can implement certain things into your life to improve your overall health. It's not just medicine that you need. There could be lots of other things that you could incorporate into your daily life that could actually transform your health and transform you as an individual to become the person that you want to become. So Katie, I am so excited to have you on the show today. I really love the fact that you help people in a holistic manner. I have changed my entire health because of holistic health. And it, it really saved me going through life. Um, you know, I had conditions I was battling. And when I turned to holistic health, it really changed my health. My health went completely from, from zero to 10. And it took time, it didn't happen overnight. But holistic health has really changed my life for the better. So I, when I have people like you on the show, it's really meaningful to me because it's powerful, holistic health. And I don't think sometimes people realize how powerful it can be. Now, tell people a little about yourself and what you do, because I think it's so important that people know what you do. Sure. Thank you so much for having me here, Stacy. It's an honor. And I love that you have um, personal experience with seeing how powerful holistic health can be. Um, my background, my, my start as a health coach started in social work. I worked with a lot of people, um, writing their goal plans and seeing kind of where they were and then helping them visualize where they wanted to be. And then working with their doctors and care supports, um, to better their health. And I saw a big disconnect in a lot of people's, um, empowerment or mindset when it came to how they, how, what it means to be healthy, how to be healthy. A lot of them felt very helpless in, in that they felt like the only solution was to go to a doctor and, and talk to the doctor about the problems and not that that's inaccurate, but they weren't taking, there was a big disconnect between the, how they were living in their day-to-day -day life and, and, um, how what they saw was impacting their health like anything wrong they they would think go to the doctor get a medication and that's going to solve the solutions well a lot of my clients would end up being on 30 plus medications taking a lot of those medications as a result from symptoms from other medications they were taking so um i saw that their the lifestyles choices that they were making and and um the way they were going about seeking solutions wasn't always beneficial. And I wanted to help empower people to really think about how they're living their life day to day, the little things that we can do that really add up and set the foundation for our health overall. Um, you know, a lot of it starts internally with our mindset and, and that uh, branches out into our physical well-being. I mean, we see it all the time with you know, we can get ourselves mentally wrapped up in a problem and we start physically seeing the the side effects. Our, our heart is racing. We, we start getting sweaty or uncomfortable kind of feeling in our own skin. So, you know, there, we need to kind of take a step back sometimes and realize that we have a lot more power and a lot more control in our overall well-being than we give ourselves credit for. And, yeah. um, while working with doctors is extremely crucial part of our health, there's a, a lot more outside of that doctor's office. You know, 99.99% of our life is outside of the doctor's office. And therefore, yeah. a lot of our choices are outside of the doctor's office as well. And that's where I want to help people connect the docs and, and become the expert of their own health. You know, what are some of the things people can do? Because food for medicine is very important. Mindset is very important. You know, you know, people sometimes don't realize but what we put in our body has such a huge impact on the way we feel, the way we think. There's scientific evidence that shows that a lot of the ingredients that is artificial that goes into a lot of these foods could actually cause different conditions. It could actually cause, you know, addictions to certain things. It can really change, you know, the clarity and cause five to your brain. You know, there's so many things that they're finding. And also, if you notice, like when we went to school, did you ever see like peanut allergies or all the, you know, all these people that have attention deficit disorders now, you know, where is it all coming from? You know, what's the cause? You know, and I, you know, 
I personally, this is my own opinion, but I think a lot has to do with the foods we put in our body, the way we're living now, the way we're, you know, it's like, we're not the, the, you know, now in our present moment, we don't live the way we did when we lived, when we were younger, you know, there's so many more foods on the market. A lot of those foods are processed and they have a lot of different ingredients in them. You know, people are just, you know, um, their health, a lot of the health is declining. Diabetes is three times as more than, you know, than it ever was, you know, people are just, you know, the cancer rates are, are high, you know, why is this all happening? You know, like in your own opinion, you know, what do you think is really causing people's health to decline so much? The, you know, is it food? Is it the way doctors are, are focusing on our health and not spending enough of time with their patients? Is it, you know, maybe not exercising enough, maybe the way we think, because we live in that go-go society where we're always on the go and we're never, you know, taking in time to really look at ourselves and look at what our body needs. You brought up so much there. I, I really don't think there's one clear answer there. I think you touched on a lot of it. Um, you know, systematically, the food industry has been trying to mass produce foods and extend their shelf lives. And that has compromised a lot of the nutrition, nutritional value to the food. Um, they've increased pesticides, growth hormones, antibiotics, all of these things that are are having a, an effect on our bodies and taking away from the nutrient quality food that we used to see. Um, you have to eat, I think, eight oranges today to have the same amount of nutrition from an orange that you would have in the 50s. Um, just because they're mass producing them, then the nutrients in the soil are getting depleted. Um, they're not like rotating the soil and, and replenishing the nutrients in the soil the way they should. So the while our population has grown, they've 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 had it down to a science to, to produce more, but taken away the quality of the food. And and that's we've seen it's kind of a trickle down effect, you know, the quality of life. Um, while medicine has improved a lot, the the actual life expectancy has decreased for the first time, I think. It, since we've been tracking that ever, um, and that's due to an increase in diabetes and heart attacks and strokes and COVID. So there's been a lot of things that have kind of started, I think we're kind of at that breaking point where we can't keep going the way we have. Clearly, we're seeing that the way we've been doing things, while we are benefiting in some ways, we're, we're having huge gaps in in the results on our impact on our body, um, in many ways as well. So, um, it's empowering yourself with knowledge, I think is the first place to start realizing that though it is an uphill battle and we're really fighting a war for our own health. And that, that is intimidating, but knowledge yeah. is that first step to, to being empowered and, and realizing that, you know, you still have choices every day that can impact your health for, in the short term and the long term. And a lot of the, the things are very little, you know, it, it feels daunting, but you take sm small insignificant steps, one step at a time. And um, years later, you're going to see a hundred and, you know, like you're going to be on the other end of the spectrum as far as where you were feeling um, initially. So it, it's really just knowing that it's, it's an uphill battle. It's never going to be it easy breezy uh, path to your health, but yeah. that doesn't mean it's impossible and it doesn't mean it has to be perfect either. So um, really just, I, unfortunately I've had conversations with a lot of people who just have the mindset, like it, it doesn't matter at this point. It's, we're, I'm never going to win. So why even try? And I want to instill and empower people with the exactly opposite kind of um, mindset. I, I want them to believe that the decisions that you're making right now and those choices towards better health today will impact the rest of your life for the better. Um, I, I think that that defeated attitude is a lot of what our society is kind of feeling in, in many areas, but then we kind of feel like well, at the end of the day, I don't have the time or energy to care for myself. I've just, I have too much on my plate already. Um, and, and I, I want to, just empower people that you you do have what it takes to to make choices for the better for your body for your overall 
life. Um, and it, it starts very small. It doesn't have to be a complete wake up one day and, and transform your whole life kind of, kind of feeling. You know, I, I think it's so important that people understand that, like you just said, you made an outstanding point that we don't have to make huge changes. People sometimes they think about change, transformation, and they get overwhelmed. You know, just the, the, the you know, change, so many people fear change one. And then, you know, and then they also fear failure. Like what happens if I can't, you know, if I try this and it, and, and it doesn't work, I'll be a failure. You know, I'm, you know I, I can't accomplish anything, you know, low self-esteem. These are common factors that cause a lot of people to not even want to try to be healthier and change their lifestyle. And, you know, for you, you know, because, you know, you just had mentioned an important fact that you it just takes small little changes and those small little changes could add up into something really big. What are some of the small changes? Like if, you know, if you were talking to one of your clients, what would be some of the things or some of the things you want the audience to know that small, some those small changes in the beginning that they can make that could have an overall impact on their health? Yes. Um, with mindset, I would say first, just start watching what you're saying to yourself. Are you talking to yourself the way you would talk to anyone else? Because a lot of times we're 10 times harder on ourselves, the narrative and the things that we say, we would never dream of saying out loud to someone else. So are you a bully to yourself or are you kind and nurturing the way you are going through the rest of your life? Because I think that some of the nicest people we see externally can be really the harshest people internally. So I want to flip that script and really like watch the narrative, watch the language you're using to yourself um, yeah. and make sure that it's as kind and nourishing to, to yourself as it is to everyone else, because you deserve that. If you're, if you're able to be kind to other people, you deserve to be kind to yourself too. Secondly, right. I would say, um, you know, like look at things like, you know, are you drinking water? from the tap? Are you drinking it from, is it filtered water? Is it bottled water? I mean, exposure to microplastics is huge. So um, finding like, you know, a, a reusable water bottle and having filtered water that can make a huge difference in our overall health that we often take for granted. Um, yeah. So in, investing in clean water in your house and a way to drink it without exposing yourself to those microplastics plastics every time you're drinking water is huge. Um, just looking at chemical exposure in general, uh, there's so many things that are, you know, filled with just unnatural chemicals that are, do, are if, if we can't read the word of the chemical on the ingredients label, our body probably is just as confused when it's trying to absorb it or consume it or know what to do with it. So think about things like that. There's, there's always the healthier alternatives and it doesn't mean you have to throw out everything you own today, but you could slowly start as, you know, when you run out of your shampoo, look for the healthier, more natural alternatives versus the the ones that are filled with parabens and sulfates and things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to sit on your skin and think about what it's going to do to your body, you know? Um, also just thinking about incorporating as many living green plant-based ingredients into your body. Um, yeah. the, the fewer ingredients in something, the better typically. Um, but more importantly, can you read everything on the label that, you yeah. know, if, if you can't read a word, if you have no idea what it is or what it's there for, I would yeah. say it's pro your body is probably going to say the same thing, you know? Right. So, um, the, the more, and it, you know, I, I've been a vegetarian for over 10 years. I love that for myself, but I know that that's not necessarily right for everyone. But the more plants you can introduce into your diet, the more you can you can have your plate like filled with, you know, a bunch of variety of plants and vegetables and nuts and herbs and less of the processed foods, the the processed carbs or the processed meats, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Right. You know, and I think that's so important. And I love what you said about the ingredients, because so many people have come to me and like, how do I know what vitamins to buy or what brand should I buy? And I always tell people, look what's in the ingredients. If you can't pronounce it, don't take it, you know? And, and I think that's like the easiest solution because, 
you know, those are so many times I've looked in the back and they have so many preservatives in the vitamins. And, you know, it's, it's so simple. If you just can't pronounce it, then you shouldn't be taking it. And then also at like, how many fillers do these things have? You know, cause that's a, I think that I don't think people realize is that let's say you're going to buy biotin. You want to, you want your hair to look nice and thick and you want your nails to grow up and be healthy. So you decide to go to get biotin. So I had a company, I had a couple of companies send me different brands of biotin and I looked in the back and there was only one company that had pure biotin. The others had all these fillers in it and such a little percentage of biotin. So you're going to buy biotin. And like, let's say I looked at four or five bottles. There was only one brand that actually was 100% biotin. And all of them had maybe 20% biotin, you know, 15% biotin. And they had all these other vitamins in it and stuff like that, because it's cheaper to make like that. But I don't think people are aware of these type of things. That's such a good point. Um, and, and the pet and the fact that, you know, a lot of people will skim on dollars to save and, and actually that's compromising your health in the long run. So I would I advocate for, you know, don't be afraid to spend more on your health. Your health is the most valuable thing you can invest in. So yeah. if it means like paying a, a few extra dollars here and there for the cleaner, less processed, um, you know, shorter shelf life products, that's, yeah. that's the best thing you can invest in. So that, that goes with food too. You know, a lot of people will, um, shy away from organic products because they, they feel like, well, that's so much money. I'm just throwing down the drain, but you, you can start feeling the, the differences in the way your body's reacting to things that are cleaner. And so, um, I, I would say what better to invest in than those cleaner, um, less processed ingredients as much as we can. Oh, hundred percent. And I always bring up like an example, like when I went to Europe, so everything was made from when you went to like restaurants or little chacharias, everything was grown from these people's backyards and everything was completely fresh. Or if they, if they went and they had fish, they went to the, 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 uh, right, right away. They, you know, they got it straight from the water. They got it straight from the fishing boats, you know, and when you ate, you ate, you could eat such large portions, but you didn't even want to, because it, they gave you such small portions and you looked and I'm like, wow, is that going to make me full? Because you're so used to the American portions where they're horrendous. They're huge. And, you know, one, it's like these small portions filled you up right away. And two, you felt like you ate so much, you know, during the trip. And at the end, I actually was less amount because of walking and because the food was natural the food filled me up right away. And, you know, that's why it, it, it it's, you know, people don't realize, but you could buy organic and spend a few dollars and you're probably going to eat a lot less and you're going to feel so much better and have so much more energy too. Cause it's a lot of times people don't realize too. And I don't know how you feel about this, but when you eat all these bad foods, you know, your, if your body doesn't know what to do with it, you know, it stores it and it leaches onto our organs. It leaches onto our body parts. It gets stored in the body. And then you start feeling sluggish. You might not feel good. You know, you're foggy and, and it's because your body can't break it down. So it doesn't know what to do with it. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, people have to really be aware of what they're putting in their bodies. And sometimes, you know, if you, if you, if you go to a restaurant, I'm sure a lot of people will spend a few extra dollars to go to a fancier restaurant where they know the food's going to be. So why not spend a few extra dollars in the grocery store and buy food that you know is going to be healthy? That's so true. And the Europe example is, is spot on as well. Um, Europe's standards for um, quality ingredients is way higher. They, they have a lot, they're a lot more restrictive on the preservatives and chemicals that they'll allow in their foods, like tenfold that we, we allow like 1200 to 2000 different chemicals in our foods here in America, in Europe, I think you could count it on your fingers and toes, the type of, the amount of chemicals that they allow in their foods. So they're, they're the, the leaders as far as like clean eating goes, they, they really That's have, I think we're, I think COVID kind of brought up a resurgence of people wanting to grow food again in their, in their backyards. We saw that our food system is not, you know, delivery is not as, as like stable as we imagine it to be. And, and therefore empower yourself with the ability to grow your own food. Even if you don't have a huge yard to do it, you could grow some herbs in your window and that's empowering, right? So um, 
just knowing where your food comes from, there's nothing wrong with going out to eat, especially, you know, on vacations of you're kind of have to, but when you're home, the, the knowing what's in everything that you're making, that, that says a lot about how your body is going to react to it. So you have the ability to put a lot of love and time and energy into the food you're making. And that's one of the best forms of self-care. Um, right. so, you know, just encouraging people to empower themselves with the ability to, to care for themselves through food, um, yes. cooking, cooking, nourishing meals. It doesn't mean compromising on taste at all. It really, you, you really just learn like what herbs bring out what flavors and, and how to cook foods to get that taste that you really like. And, and that takes time, but, um, there's no better form of self self care than, than cooking a nourishing meal for yourself and your loved ones. Oh, a hundred percent. And you know, what amazed me is that when I went to Europe, most of the food from America was banned in Europe. They didn't even sell it in Europe. Yes. That's, it baffles me. Like, I mean, I've talked to some European moms and them talking about allowing their kids to, to go through a grocery store in America gives them nightmares. It's a thing that <laughs> like literally, and it makes so much sense. And I hadn't even thought about it, but like our cereals with all artificial dyes and flavors and, um, you know, the, our candies and all the preservatives and it's just, we normalize it because this is where, you know, this is our life here, but um, really to the rest of the world, it's kind of baffling that, that we, we aren't stricter on, on those areas. Cause our, our, um, healthcare industry is having to eat that bill at the end of the day. You know, if we invested more into, you know, having our food safer, we would have to, we would be saving a lot in the long run with our healthcare system. So, um, it's like one system's cutting corners and the other system's picking up the tab. Yeah. You know, it, it was crazy. Like when, when they started coming out and talking about the hormones in the food and they talked about um, how the hormones were in the eggs and, and certain foods had hormones like the milk and stuff like that. And they were talking about how like little eight year old girls were starting to menstruate and they were starting to get boobs. And it's like, you know, right there should be a serious wake up call for many people and, and think about, you know, you, you don't want your child's body to go, you know, to, to develop at a faster pace, you know, and, and so what your child's getting starting to menstruate and starting to grow breasts at, at age eight what's going to be like, what's going to happen to their body when they're 20 or they're 30, you know, if it's progressing so quickly now because of the hormones and your whole body is run by hormones. So if you're putting too many hormones, additional hormones, and these are from animals, you know, and they're getting there and they're injecting, you know, they're injecting all these preservatives because it was a book, I think it was called vegan versus vegetarian. And I read this book and you saw what happened. They talked about like the chickens and the cows and they, they showed you what they did to them. And after that, I was like, I totally, I couldn't get those, those pictures out of your, your head. And it just, and it just, it was just, it was just totally disgraceful. But it was like, you know, if one, if one cow got sick, they injected all the cows with antibodies. And, you know, if, if, um, and they, and they put the hormones in, in the, in the animals so that everything would be bigger and, and look more attractive because eggs aren't supposed to look like so big, you know, they're not supposed the natural eggs aren't supposed to be that big. You're putting all these hormones in there and then you're putting antibiotics and then we're putting it in our body and, right. you know, doctors don't want to give people antibiotics unless they really need them. But here we're, we're getting it from the food we're eating. So it doesn't right. make sense. And what is, you know, look at the harm it's doing to people's bodies and, you know, hormones affect your brain and the way we act. And so what are, is the, are these extra hormones doing? And maybe these are why people have ADHD or ADD because we, they have so many hormones from the food. Maybe it's affecting their brain. You know, I don't have any scientific evidence. I'm just throwing it out there. But if you think about it, it could be possibilities. Oh, I, I have a hundred percent to what you say. I mean, I don't, I'm not a scientist studying the matter, but I, I agree. It's a, it's a very plausible theory that you're bringing up. And I think, you know, the whole idea of, you know, everything is made to be grown as quickly as possible and to get as big and as possible. So it can be, you know, like yeah. sold and, and harvested. And when animals 
are artificially bulked up, what is that doing to our bodies too? You know, it, it's just a vicious cycle. Um, factory farming, you know, while it's, it's probably the reason our, our population has been able to expand the, to the degree it has, it's extremely flawed in, in the way that they're treating the animals and, and the way the animals, the, the quality of the food is compromised because of the yeah. speed and, and a lot of the, you brought up antibiotics. So, um, you know, I think bring, going back to the, the small farms, the sustainable farming practices, growing in your backyard, empowering yourself with the health choices that you feel good about. And, and that all starts back with knowledge. Knowledge is power. A lot of people, you know, ignorance is bliss. It's easy to just not think about what you're putting into your body, but, and, you know, you start getting diagnosed with some health conditions and you start seeing that even if you didn't want to think about it, it still is impacting you regardless. So you might as well empower yourself today so you can start shifting towards um, making the choices that are going to align you with the optimal health down the road. Um, and it's, it, you know, I, I, I don't like to look at myself as someone who's like blowing a whistle, but I want people, I want to encourage people to, to really think on things that, that we often just choose not to think about it. You know, ignorance can be a choice. And I think when it comes to a lot, of, there's a dissonance between uh, the choices we're making in our day-to-day -day lives uh, yeah. a lot of times. And um, that's one of my main missions as a health coach is to really open up the space, not to shame and blame and and scare anyone, but really just help you think about every, all of these different angles and how they are having a long-term impact on your health and well-being overall, and what we can do to shift towards more yeah. empowerment and healthier choices where you feel better. You start seeing the results nearly instantly when you start eating cleaner, cutting out a lot of chemicals from your house and your home and your healthcare products. So, um, I mean, it's the results speak for themselves. It's really just, it feels intimidating. A lot of people, um, you know, just choose to look the other way, I think, until they're faced, you know, head on with a, a diagnosis that they you receive or, um, you know, a, a healthcare condition that's not so pleasant. So that's the things I want to avoid. I want to be proactive and, and help people tackle things while, while they're manageable um, before it becomes a, a catastrophe in their life. 100%. I, I, you know, I commend you for doing that, you know, with your practice, tell us a little about it, because I know that you have, you work with different clients for different reasons. And so tell us the different things that you do with your clients, because I'm really interested, because I feel like I love, I was reading through a lot of your materials, and I, I love the way you focus on health. Thank you. Um, I think of myself as, as kind of a, a counselor or consultant just with a health focus. So really I, I'm there to open up a safe place for you to unpack your, your health and, and where you are, your health history, um, what you're happy with, what you're not, understand your lifestyle and your specific needs, and then help you figure out from everything that you've kind of unpacked and where you are today, where you want to go going forward. And then I help you align um, your your lifestyle choices and help you make those small changes towards those overall improvements in your health. And really that's, it's, it's just by talking about health is the main thing. That's the secret sauce is I ask a lot of questions. I'm not there to pretend like I know everything about you or exactly what is best for you, but I help you open up a space for you to become the expert on your own health. And um, there's a lot of different tools for doing that. I have one-on-one -on -one sessions. We I have group workshops. I have courses and um, other programs where people can kind of learn at their own pace. But my favorite is to just open up a conversation one-on-one -on -one with an individual, really visit their health history, really see kind of what their lifestyle choices are now and where they want to be ideally going forward. And then we kind of Kate, create a specific plan that's going to work for them and get them where they want to be. I love that. Now, when it comes to stress, 
how do you feel like what are some of the things that you like to like you know advise your your clients you want to you know because stress is just unavoidable every day we're 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 faced with some type of stress but some people can handle stress better than others but like you know like i was i think i was mentioning it to you before the show you know the statistic is 70 percent of illnesses are caused by stress so it's really important for people to understand how to handle stress in their lives. What are some of the things that you'd like to advise to your clients when it comes to how to cope with stress? Yeah. First it's identifying stress. That's such a huge part of it is a lot of times we're so we're in a stressful living environment. Stress is just kind of another part of our day when really it should be something that kind of triggers, like I need to make an adjustment, you know, instead of something, I just need to white knuckle my way through kind of thing. So, um, understanding your body's cues, understanding what happens when you get stressed, what environmental factors are contributing to the stress, and then taking the power back and what shifts can you make? Uh, oftentimes we can't quit our job tomorrow to avoid stress, but we could we could improve our work environment to make it less stressful. We can empower ourselves with things like breathing techniques or calming background music or taking a walk, uh, taking a little break, getting some fresh air and sunshine, and then coming back after we can kind of ground ourselves a little bit. So um, really it's understanding stress on an individual level and then working on what can we control and what can't we, but we can identify and work with. Right. I love it. I love it. Now, when it comes to exercise, exercise, you know, there's so many fitness gurus out there saying different things, you know, but like for me, I feel like everybody is capable of doing different things. And so, you know, not every, you know, what one person does and they consider exercise, another person would be like, oh, no, no, no. You know, it's really what you're capable of doing, I think, and what your body needs. And just to get movement and circulation in your body, you know, could just help people who suffer from aches and pains. You know, like when it comes to exercise, do you have any suggestions for, for our viewers? That's a great question. I would say find something that is sustainable for you. And that can be big or small, like stretching and walking, like those should be celebrated as wins and being physically active. A lot of times people think like, if I'm not running a marathon, then I, I shouldn't be proud of, you know, going for a walk, but really it's, are you consistently moving? Are you consistently getting engaged with your body and, and working towards being, you know, a little bit stronger, building up a little more endurance, being a little more flexible, like all of those things are, are more of the goal than, than trying to beat your neighbor in a race or, you know, do more push ups than, than your coworker, you know, it's, it shouldn't be a competitive uh, game with anyone other than yourself. And, um, I, I think it's finding stuff that you love as well. Like for me personally, you know, I'm not a runner. I, I don't mind running on an elliptical, but if you ask me to run outside, I, I, I hate the feeling of running outside. I can just feel like the stress hormones starting to pick up the, the second I get up, get running. So, I like to dance. I, you know, and I, and I have probably two dozen tools in my toolbox of exercises I love to do, but I wouldn't expect anyone who doesn't like to do something to continue to, you know, force their way through it. So finding things that are enjoyable, meaningful, and sustainable for them. And then, you know, getting your baseline, where are you today? And then how can you slowly start working on making improvements from there? I love it. I love it. Now, where, you know, before we go, actually, I, you know, for our, throughout our uh, conversation, I thought that you, you, picked, you pointed out a lot of great information. What are some of the things that you'd like to emphasize from our conversation that you really would like the listeners to really take in and understand? Sure. First and foremost, that your health is in your hands. I think that, um, we live in a culture where we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. And we see so many success stories and think that if I copy and paste what that person's doing, I'm going to get the same results. A lot of times we'll try that and end up falling short and then feeling a sense of failure. So just owning that your body is individual and there's no shame in, in figuring out an individual healthcare plan that's right for you. That's how it's going to be the most sustainable 
Um, and, and really playing off of your strengths and weaknesses, the things you enjoy, your particular schedule, your, you know, where you live, um, all of those factors can, can play a big part of your overall health and wellness and the practices that you incorporate. Also, health is an inside job. So really just remembering that a lot of the things we're telling ourselves are going to impact the way we're living our lives in regards to our health. So if we believe that we can't do it or it's impossible, we're not even going to try. So just believing that you are fully capable of becoming empowered in, in terms of your health and wellness, and that it's not necessarily going to be a quick and easy um, solution and, and a road to health, um, you know, health is going to look very different for each of us. So just... Yeah being patient with yourself, giving yourself grace, but also knowing that it's going to take consistent effort. Um, and, and it's going to look very unique to yourself and that, and that's worth celebrating rather than, um, you know, kind of having the, the comparison, um, defeating outlook when it comes to health. So, um, th those things, I, I also just, just to have fun and and celebrate your body, celebrate life, and then celebrate, um, you know, being able to be alive by by honoring your body and how you're caring for it. I think um, this fast paced society has us kind of putting a lot of our self care practices on the back burner, and really they should be first and foremost. Like get home from work and and do your exercises first. Prepare a healthy meal with your um, family do do the things that are gonna honor your body and your health first so the rest of your life can just kind of you know have health as a priority and the rest can kind of fall around oh I love that I love that now if people want to contact you and they want your help where can they go Yes. Um, purposefulpathhealth.com is my website. I have services listed there. I also have a book you can find on Amazon. It's called Purposeful Health. Um, it's available paperback, hardcover, Kindle, and very soon audiobook. Um, oh, yeah, thank you. And um, I do one-on-one -on -one services. I do group sessions, workshops. I do office programs to help um, offices become more holistically uh, healthy for all their employees. And um, I have more to come, more courses and, and more um, services to provide in the near future here too. Oh, wonderful. And your book, what is your book about? Yeah, Purposeful Health is a lot about what we just talked about, um, the shortcomings of our current healthcare system and how our society kind of has been... Um, Try, you know, not serving us the best as far as in our own health and wellness, and then examining from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective ways that we can uh, empower ourselves. It's really a guide to get you to critically think about all of these different, over 150 different areas of life, and kind of yeah. go back to how is that impacting your health, or how can this better my health? So, um, really, just a guide to help people uh, think critically about their own health and wellness. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, this has been amazing, Katie. I thank you so much for being on the show today. And I hope you'll come back as a guest because you're just amazing. I love what you stand for. And the way you handle holistic health, I think is so, you know, so impressive. And I think so many people really have to look into holistic health. And I, you know, I think our society is starting to really understand and, and see how powerful holistic health is, but it's so, you know, it's, it, it's different to just read something on the internet verse when you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody and, you know, the advice that, uh, uh, um, holistic health coach or consultant can give you and the guidance they can give you is completely different than just reading an article on the internet. And, you know, when you could talk to somebody and tell them what you're going through and, and the issues that you're experiencing, and then have that person work with you and create a constructive plan just for you and get you to the point where you really want to be is, is so powerful. So I, I really commend you on what you do. You're just fabulous. And I, I really think you're doing a great job. Thank you so much, Stacey. It's an honor to be here. I, I'm a huge fan of your podcast and all of the guests you bring on. You have a wonderful insight and just an honor to be a part of it. So I'll come back anytime. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. And you have a great day. You as well. Take care.